All righty, Chef Buck here, and today we're gonna cook up the best onion ring recipe in the oven. You know, I love onion rings. They're kind of a pain in the tuchus, you know, if you wanna deep fry them. They taste fantastico if you deep fry them. And it's hard to get them to taste fantastico if you bake them in the oven, but you can do it. It's a little bit of effort, but it's healthier and they'll taste fantastic. I like to use a yellow onion, you know, or a sweet onion, just cut off the ends, and then I'm gonna slice it into some nice, thick onion ring sizes. I like mine about a half an inch thick. Don't skimp on the size of the onion, because you want them to be oniony. You don't want them to be overly bready, but you're gonna to wanna to get a, a nice breading on here. So use nice, thick onion rings. You know, just pop them out. You know, the little pieces taste fantastic. So use the whole onion, and then I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna throw them in a Ziploc bag with a little bit of flour. And this is key, because you're gonna want some different stages to the battering process. And you don't wanna skip out on any of these, because they won't work if you skip out. Because I've made some less than spectacular <laughs> baked onion ring recipes, you know, trying to uh, cut out some of these steps. But don't do it, you know, get you a little flour in a Ziploc bag and get your onion rings coated up. And then we're gonna get some panko breadcrumbs, you know, because you want some nice breadcrumbs to add a crunchy outer coating to your batter. So we're gonna mix in our seasoning with our breadcrumbs. I got a little bit of cornmeal. I'm putting some Italian seasonings in here, but just use some parsley if you like. I got some paprika and some garlic powder and a little bit of salt, but use whatever seasonings you wanna use, but just use a lot of it. I'm throwing in some curry powder. If you don't wanna use curry, use some turmeric. I like to use curry or turmeric when I'm doing these type of uh, baked recipes because it adds a nice color. You can put in some chili powder if you want for a little bit of kick. I'm putting in some uh, chipotle. But whatever seasonings you like, you know, and then get them all mixed up, you know, so that your seasoning and your breadcrumbs are well incorporated. And now we're gonna throw together the wet part of our batter. You know, I'm putting in some, a couple of eggs, the whites and the yellows, you know, whisking them up. And then I'm gonna add in a little bit of half and half. You know, use some half and half or some buttermilk or some whole milk. You know, don't use water or a thin uh, skim milk. You know, you want something nice and thick. And then I'm putting some butter in here, you know, so to add some fat and then a little bit of flour. Basically what we're making is a very thin pancake batter. Cause you know, when you're baking your onion rings, the batter is key. You want a nice heavy batter on there. So uh, now that we've got all our stages, our different, uh, uh, levels of batter ready. Now we're going to throw it together. So we've got our lightly floured onion rings. We're going to throw that into our pancakey type batter and then get it all uh, covered up. And then we're going to take it and cover it with our breadcrumbs, gingerly cover it with our breadcrumbs. You know, you want a nice coating on there, but you don't want to manhandle it. You don't want to overhandle it because the batter is going to be um, very precarious <laughs> on these onion rings, but it's key, you know, to have it battered very well. See, when you're deep frying, you know, you can put your batter on there and you throw it in the hot oil and it seals it right away. But when you're baking, you're gonna want that batter to be thick enough to stay on the onion, you know, while it has time to bake. So get you a nice pancakey batter coating on the onion ring, uh, get as much of that batter off as possible, and then gingerly coat it with your breadcrumbs. I like to use chopsticks so I don't have my hands all over it, you know, because you don't want your uh, breadcrumbs to clump up and you don't want to be taking the batter off with your fingers. So chopsticks I find are ideal, you know, but coat up all the different pieces, the little small pieces uh, taste fantastic when they're baked up. You know, space them out so they're not touching, put the smaller rings inside the bigger rings. Um, you know, and, and this is just one onion and it fills up the whole pan. And it's plenty enough for, uh, for me and camera girl. Uh, before I slide it in the oven, I'm going to take some uh, cooking spray and just give it a, a light little spray. You know, that's going to help to crisp it up as well. And then I slide it in the oven, boom, 400 degrees. And now this is where you want to be careful. You know, you want to keep an eye on it. So after 10 minutes, you know, I pulled it out and took a look at it and it wasn't done enough. I could have flipped it, but I wanted to get a little crispier, but I don't want to wait until it's overdone. You know, I don't want to do all of this work and then overcook them. So I slid it back in there, gave it another five minutes, and then boom, I went ahead and flipped them. And at some point you wanna flip them so that they'll cook a little more evenly. You don't want one side 
to be down on the hot pan longer uh, so that it gets uh, overcooked on one side. So it, at some point, about halfway or a little more than halfway, flip them over and then slide it back in the oven uh, for the finishing, whatever it is, five or 10 minutes, you know, depending on your oven, just keep an eye on it. You know, the total cooking time for this was about 20 minutes. And there you have it, man. And these onion rings are delicious. You know, they're just as good as deep fried, you know, which is hard to believe. Uh, but you got to do it just right. You know, don't skimp on any of these steps and you will have some onion rings out of the oven that taste fantastic. If you want to make a delicious oven baked uh, onion ring recipe, this is the way to go. You listen to this. You hear that? Nice, crunchy, very flavorful. The onion is still moist, you know, because I like onion in my onion rings. I don't just want it to be a bunch of bread, but you got to have a good breading on there for it to be a successful onion ring in the oven. If you don't want the mess and the fussiness of fooling around with all that oil, and you want some semi-healthy onion rings, then bake them up. But you're going to have to bake them up like this. I mean, you can make some pretty shabby, uh, baked onion ring recipes. I've made a few of them, you know, trying to find the right combo that works. And I tried to make them with fewer steps than this, but they haven't been successful. This is the boom. This is the successful way to do it. You know, bake them until they're done, but don't overdo them. You know, sometimes, you know, you're going to want to bake them too much, you know, to get them crispy. Oh, it's a plain. I love planes. Oh, boy, are they having an air show? Are they having an air show today? You know, check it out if you wanna if you wanna look at the recipe, boom, I'll have it down below. If you wanna print it out, go to myfoodchannel.com. You know, you can print all my recipes there. You know, if you're not a subscriber, wow, what a what an awesome and excellent time this is to subscribe. You know, thumbs up the video, do all that stuff that benefits me. And you know, and then this will benefit you if you make this recipe. Thanks for watching and doing all that stuff. You know, bon appetit. Let me know what you think. And uh, I'll see you in the future. Bye bye. Hear that? Holy cow. I have to wear earplugs. Eat these things. They're that crispy.